up with and uh, mm -hmm. people that I knew, the church. It was like I had only left for a short time. It was like a year to the day, mm -hmm. maybe 18 months. Okay. As a matter of fact, when I got back in August of 57, I only had like six months before I would be discharged. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, I re-enlisted. I had 13 years active duty. Okay, okay. So when you re-enlisted, uh, uh, you had how long? How much longer were you here in Detroit? Because you indicated you were you were here for four years uh, on active. Yeah, I got back uh, August fifty seven, mm -hmm. and then uh, February fifty eight. I was scheduled to be discharged. Mm -hmm. They discharged me in January. Mm -hmm. uh, the government uh, was very clever in that uh, if you didn't do that last thirty days. Uh, if you re-enlisted, they didn't have to pay you the extra three or four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. I had no intention of re-enlisting, so I didn't have a problem with that. And um, I guess by this time I'm 20. I got married at 20 years old. Mm -hmm. I've been married 51 years now. And uh, uh, there were no jobs then in February 58. Mm -hmm. So I re-enlisted uh, I got married in January '58, and I re-enlisted February '58, March, to um, to have a job to feed my mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. upcoming family. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Um, okay, hold that thought for a minute while while you're when you re-up. When you were in California, when you had some off time, what what did you do during your off time? Um, we catch. I would catch a bus to uh, San, <coughs> excuse me, San Francisco, mm -hmm. or Vallejo, that was the name of the other town. Uh, Vallejo, California. Uh, I'd go to jazz clubs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I always liked jazz, even at that age, mm -hmm. and before, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, on Fillmore Street, they had a lot of real nice jazz clubs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I would go there and, and have a good time. Okay. All right. So now we'll... We're, we're kind of caught up now. We have, we are, we're up at uh, you re-enlisted in February of uh, '58. Um, just take us from there. What uh, you had, you had gotten married mm -hmm. in yeah, January '58. Okay, and you were still stationed here in Detroit. Right after I re-enlisted, um, the the missiles were going obsolete. Mm -hmm. They were getting ready to bring in a missile called Nike Hercules. Mm -hmm. It was Nike Ajax at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I was stationed here in Detroit at Rouge Park. They had a missile site there. When that one went down, I went to Southfield. That one went down. And then I went to Southridge Air Force Base, all Nike Ajax missile sites. Okay. And uh, then that one was getting ready to go down. What were, what were your duties at these various sites? I was uh, in what was called the launching area, mm -hmm. and I was a panel operator. Mm -hmm. There was a panel underground that had uh, various colored lights that would indicate what switch you were to throw to mm -hmm. make the thing operational or whatever mm -hmm. you had to do. Okay. And that was uh, primarily my job. So you were, you were kind of like the, the launcher? Uh, or do you, when, when you got orders to, to fire a missile, that's, yeah. what, that's what you were, mm -hmm. in essence? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, so what, what, what did you think of that to a duty? I mean, having that responsibility or... Uh, well, I didn't... I wasn't <coughs> that impressed. I didn't think that much... Of, I was glad for the job mm -hmm. because it, uh, it wasn't as physical as the fellas pushing the missiles up and down the rails. So I was glad to be a panel operator, mm -hmm. but um, I wasn't that um, that impressed with the missile itself. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was glad to have the job. Sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so you were, um, and that, in essence, as you 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 were married. So I guess I assume you're just like any other civilian at this point in time, as for home life and oh, yeah. back to yeah. work, do your eight hours and then and go, go home. Go yeah. home. Okay. All right. Um, so, how long were you doing this, and, and when did you leave Detroit? So you had been in. Well, I um, when the missiles went uh, obsolete 
here in Detroit. I was shipped out to Germany in December 1961. Okay. When I went to Germany, I couldn't bring my wife with me because a uh, thing called the Berlin Crisis was on and there was no dependent travel at that time. Mm -hmm. So I went to Germany December 61 and uh, to a missile site and my wife uh, came along after a year when the dependent ban was dropped. Okay. And I was in Germany for three years. All right, what were your rank when you got shipped over? E5. Okay, E5. Okay. All right. And you still had, then what were your responsibilities in Germany? Just the same? Uh, pretty much the same. Um, as an E5, though, I was uh, in the launching section but I was uh, assistant section chief at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. E6 was the uh, section chief. Mm -hmm. So what did, it, what did it feel like having to have, have responsibilities to launch missiles that would... Well, while destroy? I was there, uh, the, the most, uh, I guess the most memorable time would be when um, the, um, the attempted overthrow of Castro happened, the Bay of Pigs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and um, everybody was on high alert, and we would sit in, the, there was a thing called the, the um, well, the launching area. Inside that launching area, we would be housed, when you were on duty, you would be housed in a berm, which was um, uh, 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 like a, something, like a cave almost that was inside the berm. We had a pot-bellied stove in there that came out the top of the berm and uh, we would be on alert. Mm -hmm. Of course you could sleep. And we would listen to the radio and we heard them heard them say that uh, if um, the Russian ships don't stop when they're ordered to, they're going to fire a shot over the bow and if they didn't stop then they were going to blow them out of the water and then it was a back and forth um, between the Russians and the Americans, uh, see who would blink first. That was probably the most frightening time because I would rather have been at home during a crisis like that. Yeah, you guys are on high alert, aren't you? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And your wife was there in during that time? She wasn't there at that time. That was in, was she there? I, no, I'm not sure if she was there at that time or not. Mm -hmm. That would have been 66. Oh, okay. That would have been 66. No, she wasn't there at that time. And, um, of course, it never happened. The Russians turned around and uh, mm -hmm. took the missiles back to their homeland. Okay. Had your wife been to Germany and then went back? No, no, there? no. She came a year after I got there. Okay. And you got there in... 60 December 65. She oh, came okay. December 66. Okay, okay, okay. All right. All right. Um, and while you were in Germany... Um, during your off time, what did, what, what did you do for recreation or... or did, oh, I went to, to Taiwan.